What's going on guys, Jamie Fenn here and today I'm going to show you how to do the Sam Colder drawing transition in DaVinci Resolve. He actually did this in his My Year 2016 video and there are a bunch of tutorials out there on how to do it, but none of them were in DaVinci, so I figured why not recreate it and teach you guys how to do it. So let's open up DaVinci and get started. Okay, so here is the original clip and what I'm gonna do is actually just freeze frame this first point where he cuts to him drawing. And what I'm gonna do is create a duplicate clip, come to that point where I want the freeze frame, come up to clip and select freeze frame. I'm gonna resize it to that point so that's where the cut starts, boom. And then next what I wanna do is come to the point where the hyperlapse is almost in full effect like that. And I'm going to duplicate that clip as well. So I'm gonna hold down Alt or Option and drag up on that clip. I'm going to then click on it and make sure that it's at the point where I want to freeze frame that specific frame, come up to clip, select freeze frame there as well. So what I'm gonna do now is put that underneath this clip. So we have now a freeze frame and this freeze frame underneath. So now what I'm gonna do is just kind of resize that and then go to the point where it basically hyperlapses into the transition from where we made the cut point. Next, what I wanna do is highlight those two freeze frames, right click and create a new fusion clip. I'm going to then put the cursor over that clip and let's go into Fusion. All right, so if you wanna see what median clip is what, you can actually just drag it up into the viewer window. And so I'm gonna rename this one by pushing F2, typing Dubai, it's gonna do draw. And we essentially want the draw clip to be on the foreground and we want the Dubai clip to be on the background. So this is set up actually correct. The next thing I did is I came to the draw node and we wanna do a Luma keyer. So hold down shift and press space bar, type in Luma keyer. I'm going to make this one viewer window and I'm going to come up to the inspector and instead of having this be default like that, I want to click on invert and bring up the low all the way. So the next thing I want to do since the Luma keyer is affecting the whole clip when we bring this down, which we don't want, we just want it to affect this clip here. I'm going to come down here to the rectangle tool and that will connect automatically to the effect mask. So now when we drag the low down on the Luma keyer, it will only happen within that rectangle. So let's go ahead and resize the rectangle. I'm gonna just make it pretty much the same size as the piece of paper that he's working on, that he's drawing on. And I'm just gonna rotate it a little bit. So I'm gonna rotate the angle Readjust it to about right there. And then I'm just gonna play with the Lumic here. So I'm actually gonna bring down the low just a little bit. Now that we can see through, so what I'm gonna do now is click on the Dubai clip and hold down shift and press spacebar and type in transform. We want to adjust the size of the building to kind of match up with the background. If we want, we can bring down the Lumic here a little bit more just to kind of see through a little bit better. I'm gonna rotate this a little bit, the building underneath. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but something like that. The next thing I wanna do is somewhat adjust the border here. So I wanna just turn up the soft edge. So I'm gonna click on the rectangle node. I'm gonna bring up the soft edge just a little bit. Maybe bring down the border width a tiny bit as well. It looks a little bit better. Okay, so now that we've created our composite, now we can do some keyframing and some animation with our Lumic here. Make sure you're at the beginning of the clip, click on the Lumic here, come over here to where you see the low and high luminance channels, make sure these are all the way up at the top. Click on that little diamond keyframe button, and then what we're going to do is go all the way to the end, or almost to all the way to the end actually, just do a few frames before. And what I'm going to do is just drag this down. Also make sure it's inverted, just saying, because he has the whites come through first. So now when you play it back, we get something that looks like that. 
The next thing I want to do is add a transform tool after the merge node here. So I'm going to select the merge node and hold down shift and press spacebar and type in transform. And right when it gets to the point of almost fully being shown through on the piece of paper, he kind of zooms in and kind of distorts, does this kind of transition. Now, you may have some drag and drop transitions that you want to just apply. Feel free to do that. I'm going to show you how to do the same thing just without the drag and drop. Here is the zoom portion of this transition. With the transform node, I'm going to just keyframe the size. So I clicked on the keyframe button at the point of where it was about halfway coming through. And I'm going to zoom this up to like here. And I'm just going to go woo like that. Okay. So may not be as fast as I like it or as smooth, but that's what the spline adjustment is for. So I'm going to come up to the spline with the size transform selected. I'm going to just fade these in like that. I'm just going to fade in the very beginning. I'm actually going to bring it up a little bit so it's faster. Like that. Maybe even push it up a little further than five. Maybe we'll go to like seven, see how that looks. Cool. And another thing we want to do is add some motion blur. So come over here to the second icon with the transform selected and select motion blur and you can adjust the amount of the quality in the shutter. That will slow things down for your computer for sure. But as you can see here, it adds a really cool looking motion blur effect to the zoom portion of this transition. You can just turn it off for now, but just, you know, keep in mind, that's what you have to do last on this whole thing. Okay, so the next step is to kind of distort this whole image while it zooms. So at the point of where it starts to zoom, we want to distort. So actually, I'm going to do some distorting after this transform node. So select the transform, hold down shift, press spacebar. And let's type in, there's like warper, grid warp. There's also distort, lens distort. I have some extra add-ons, so maybe you guys will have to pick which one works best for you. But lens distort could work pretty well. And so in order to kind of get some cool distortion, but as he starts to zoom in here, what I'm going to do is click on the lens distort. Like I said, you may not have this specific lens distort. You may actually have this one, which is the lens distortion. And it will look like that with the red, green, blue distortion. You'll do the same exact thing with this. You'll just keyframe the the points like I will with this other node. So if I if you don't have this one, don't worry about it. Just kind of do it with this one. But I'm going to do it with this lens distort. I like this one a little bit better. So as it zooms in, I start to keyframe the distortion. And I'm going to get to this point and distort the heck out of it. We do like three. So now as it zooms, and now you can see this is kind of the effect that we're getting. It's like wrapping around the lens and it's going to zoom in, kind of do its thing. And also when I turn on the motion blur, now this is what it'll look like. It'll really do that effect. And another thing that we can do is also change some of the, uh, it's kind of like a, a glowy kind of RGB distortion kind of thing. So another thing what we can do is just do some chromatic displacement. If you look here closely, like on his jeans, this chromatic displacement kind of adds to the effect of the zoom. If you don't have this, this may be an extra that I have, but you can also do this with other things like the, uh, the other lens distort that I showed you. So if you want to do something with this, you can just put this all at one. And what you can do is turn off the gang and keyframe in something like that. And then you can keyframe all of them to pull with this transition. But like I said, I'm not using it. I'm using a different one, but I'm just showing you that's how you can get this extra little effect going. You can kind of pull the, the RGBs apart while it zooms. That's what he did in the original transition. So anyways, I'm going to use the chromatic displacement. I also need to keyframe the chroma mix on this. So I'll just do that real quick. You can do the same thing with the other node that I showed you that will do the lens distort. 
And the last but not least, I may just add a little bit of glow to this scene. So whatever glow you like, you can try this glow here or this glow. I'm just going to add that one. And what happens is that when it zooms, it starts to really, it starts to kind of expose a little bit higher. So what we can do is just basically turn down the threshold while it zooms up. So I'm just going to keyframe the sign threshold and turn that up like that, or essentially turn it down. And now it zooms in. Okay, so we have that. You can play with the curve of the Lumic here so it doesn't happen so fast. That's just how it is for right now for the example. So the next thing I did was I came over to the inspector with this fusion clip selected. I'm gonna bring it up in size a little bit to the point where the cinematic bars are out of frame. And I'm gonna come up to the effects library and I'm gonna scroll down under the open effects and I'm going to add some camera shake. By default, it's pretty crazy looking. So I'm just gonna turn down the speed scale and I'm also gonna add a little bit of a zoom. So I'm gonna come back to the video portion of the inspector. I'm going to click on the keyframe next to the zoom and I'm also going to do a little bit of rotation. So I'm going to click on the rotate angle keyframe and I'm going to come to the beginning of it, which is right here. And then I'm going to go to the ending of the clip and I'm just going to add a little bit of zoom, just a tiny bit and a little bit of rotation. Also, what I'm going to do is actually add a adjustment clip on top of all of this and add the cinematic black bars. I know you can do this by going up to the timeline and selecting output blanking, but I want it just for this specific shot. Then I'm going to come down to the cropping. I'm going to crop the top 140 and I'm going to crop the bottom 140. This is what the final transition will look like. Hey, thank you so much for watching. If you like videos like this, there's a link right here to my other visual effects and transitions. So feel free to check that out. And if you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button, like this video if you like it, and comment down below if you wanna see more. All right, until next time, I'll see you in my next video.